Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make strawberry cheesecake macarons, and this is what they look like. This cookie takes two almond flavored meringue cookies, and then we're going to sandwich it together with this delicious strawberry cheesecake filling. So the first thing you will need to, we're going to make a template. You will need three baking sheets lined with parchment paper. Now I like to make this template because we are piping our uh, batter and to make the cookies. So what you will need is either a cookie cutter or I'm actually using the bottom of a pastry tip. You want it uh, one and a half inches in diameter, which is 3.75 centimeters, and then use a felt marker and then I've made four across and six rows down. Do that and then what I do is I take my parchment paper and then I just put the template underneath there and then what we're going to do is we pipe all our cookies and then we just kind of take out that and then do it for the next sheet. So do that ahead of time and then I, I'll admit French macarons are a little difficult to master. Well worth it, but they can be a little tricky. So the first thing that you want to do is weigh your ingredients. You know, you can buy a digital scale for probably less than what you can buy like stainless steel measuring cups, so it's well worth the investment. The first thing that you will need is, and you need to do this at least the day before, I usually like two, three days before up to five. You want to take four large eggs and separate them. Put the whites in a bowl and then take either, I just use a uh, paper towel. You can use cheesecloth. Just kind of wrap it around that, cover it all, and put them into the refrigerator. Like I said, at least overnight. I kind of, I recommend two, three days. And that's going to dry out our... Um, whites a little because I like to use and that's what's called aged egg whites. Once I do that I do weigh them because you know really I find while uh, typically a uh, large egg white is about 30 grams but you know it can vary and then once they sit for a few days after you weigh them after that it's a little less because you lose some water out of your whites. So then weigh them and you want a hundred grams of egg whites. So then what I'm going to do, you want your food processor, I'm going to put in a uh, hundred grams of ground blanched almonds. That's one cup. Again, please weigh your ingredients. Now I'm just, I just buy my ground blanched almonds in the, I find you can find them in the grocery store, either on the baking aisle or in the health food section. You can find them in health food stores or online, but in a pinch you could take blanched almonds, 100 grams, and just, you know, process them in your food processor. So just put that in there. Along with 180 grams of confectioner sugar, you may know that as powdered or icing sugar, that would be one and a half cups. Let's put that in there. And then I'm going to add just a touch of strawberry flavor to our batter. You don't have to, but I kind of like that. And what I'm, gonna, what I'm using is freezed dried strawberries. I mean, when I discovered these, it's like a baker's dream because what it is, they're freeze dried and they really have an intense concentrated strawberry flavor. And the added benefit of these is unlike a strawberry sauce or a strawberry jam that when you add it to like a filling or something, it makes it soft because there's water in the puree or in the jam. These, no, it's just because all the water is, is taken out. So I'm adding um, one gram, which when in a powder form, it's like one teaspoon. So I'm just gonna put that right in there. Now, if you, you don't have to use the freeze dried in here. I am because why not? This is also what we're going to use in the filling, and it's so good. So what I'm going to do now is just process this a minute or two until everything's all mixed together, and I want to even grind those uh, almonds up a little more. Okay, that's good enough. 
So now what I'm going to do is sift this mixture just in case there's some, you know, bigger pieces of uh, almond. We'll get rid of that. So I'm just going to, you could sift it onto a, or I'm using a strainer here, but if you have a sifter, you can use that. You do it onto a piece of parchment paper, but I'm just going to do it right into a bowl. Either way. Oh, don't want to miss that. <laughs> Use it all. So I'm just going to sift all this into my bowl. And then I'm going to get out my electric mixer and we will start our meringue. So now we're going to make our meringue. If you have a stand mixer like I have here, use your whisk attachment or you could use a hand mixer for this. Now, whenever you're beating egg whites for a meringue, make sure that your bowl and your whisk have no like residual grease. So really wash and dry your bowl and your uh, whisk really well. Now, your egg whites need to be at room temperature. So what I do, you know, like an hour or two before I start, just take them out of the fridge and let them come up to room temperature. So, like I said, you need 100 grams which, of aged egg whites, which is about four large that have been sitting a few days. And then I like to add about a quarter of a teaspoon, which is one gram of cream of tartar. Now I add this to stabilize the whites, which means, you know, they come to their full volume and, you know, it kind of prevents you from uh, over beating them. Now, they usually come in a jar like this, find them on their baking aisle, spice section. If you cannot, some people say they can't find it, you could just leave it out or you could use just a quarter of a teaspoon of lemon juice. So. There is an alternative, so I'm just going to whisk that in. And then I'm going to start, I'm going to beat these on like medium low speed until they get almost to like soft peaks. So that's going to take, you know, a few minutes. Okay. So, you see this? It's kind of just starting to get soft peaks. So now what we're going to do, put that in there, we're going to increase our speed to high speed and we're going to gradually add 35 grams, which is two and a half tablespoons of super fine white sugar. This is what it looks like. Now you could just use granulated white. The reason I'm using super fine is it dissolves a lot quicker into our meringue. So what I do is I just take granulated white, put it in my food processor, process it for, you know, 30 seconds or something, and you have super fine. I mean, you can buy it, but that's how I do it. So what we're going to do is I, I'm going to add a little. We're going to let that beat in and dissolve, and then we're going to keep adding and adding and beating our meringue until it comes to really stiff peaks. And they're really shiny and glossy and just beautiful. <laughs> but I'll show you what you're looking for when we, when we get to that point. Okay, I think it's done. We will check it here. So as you can see, what I like to do is give it a good stir and then slowly bring it up. And see, it stands straight up. You don't want any like flop, flop over. <laughs> If, that, if yours does that, it needs to be beaten a little more. And actually, you can always tell because there's, when you stir it, there's a little bit of resistance to you in your meringue. So that's how you know also that it's done. And as you can see, it is smooth. It is glossy. So beautiful. I mean, it's amazing how you take whites and it's just this liquid and you turn it into this. So now, have you ever gone into a pastry shop and... Look, they, there's always a rainbow of uh, colors of macarons. 
and typically the color matches whatever the flavor of the filling. So if you have chocolate, it's usually brown, and lemon is yellow, and pistachio is green, and so on. Um, strawberry, I always waffle between red or pink. So I'm going to leave that up to you. Uh, so mine, I'm using, actually, I like to use these gel paste food coloring. I just buy them online like Amazon. They give a really good color. And whenever you're coloring your meringue, you want to do the color deeper than what you actually want your cookies to turn out because when they bake, the color does fade a little. I'm actually using this as a super red. I tried just using the pink, but I found I didn't get, it just wouldn't get a deep enough color. So this is a super red. The amount, uh, you know, you can kind of experiment. I'm going to say somewhere between an eighth of a teaspoon and a quarter, depending on like how deep the color you want. I'm going to start with that and beat it in and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, I'm going to add Oh, really, you want to make sure the whole meringue is colored. I'm going to add there's a little more on my spoon. I'm going to add that in. Like I said, you can just do it whatever color you want. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what you have to do for that. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go with that pretty bright like I said the color is going to fade now typically you can add you know we remember our ground almonds and confectioner sugar you could add it into here but you know what I prefer using a wide and shallow bowl you don't have to but you know this is the trick this is actually the tricky part of the technique I guess that's why if you've ever bought a, a macaron, you kind of go for one. <laughs> and you take little tiny bites because they're so expensive. But that's because they are a little tricky to make. Okay. So now I'm going to gradually add my um, ground almond mixture. So I'm just going to sprinkle. You could all, you could sift it over the top, but we already did sift it. So I'm just going to use a large spoon, and then we're going to just fold it in. What's interesting, I mean, typically when you make a meringue and you fold it into a batter, you don't want to get rid of any air. You want it to, you know, want to be very careful. With a macaron batter, it's different. We are going to, we want some of that air to come out. So don't be bashful in your stirring. I'm going to probably do this in uh, four editions. Okay, this is the last. sure you really scrape the sides. I'm going to actually use my scraper. Gets a little stuck on there. And you may have to scrape off your spatula too because it tends to stick. Okay, so we're almost there. So as you notice, I'm, and then I'm kind of going like this, and that takes out some of the air. I'm going to just check this. We want like a thick, that's a little too thick. So what I'm going to do is just stir it like, and take out some more air. This is a tricky part. <laughs> it's looking pretty good.
So it kind of goes in and then dissolves in. So that I'm going to go with this. Hope for the best. So now we are going to pipe. So what I've got, pretty large piping bag. I've fitted it with a half inch plain tip that's about one and a quarter centimeters, which is uh, a Wilton 1A. And so you put your tip in there. And then what I do is I take the, the end of my bag, kind of twist it and then stick it in there like that so that when we put our batter in, it doesn't kind of come all out the other end. <laughs> gives us a, a chance to put our batter in and not make a mess. So I just... I'm not going to put all of my batter in. Um, I'm just going to put, you know, maybe half. Because if I put it all, I find, you know, when you're piping, you kind of work, you know, you're holding the bag and then you can get too much air taken out of your meringue. So that's why I like put about a half and then pipe and then fill the bag up with the rest. So now, see, it doesn't come out the end. So now, if you kind of made a mess, sometimes I do. <laughs> And your bat and your batter's all the way up. You just take a flat edge and just kind of go like so. And that kind of gets the air out too. So what you want to do is make sure get it down. Twist your bag, and then you're ready. This hand I'm going to guide, and this one I'll pipe. So we have our uh, baking sheet. We got our template underneath. You know, use a felt marker so you can see your uh, template and then when you're ready um, then you can release that end and push down so I'm going to keep piping like almost to the batter goes out to the end of the circle but not quite so straight down in the center even pressure up and just Okay, so our last one, okay. and then I just kind of turn my bag like this, put it right like that. So now, I did, if you did slop like me, then you can just take your finger, clean that up. Piping is not my <laughs> strong suit, I admit it. So then, just take slip your template out and you're we're just going to put that underneath of our next sheet and then what you want to do now is bang this on the counter to get rid of any air bubbles that are in the meringue so it's going to be kind of noisy okay that'd be good then what you can also do is take a toothpick and if you see some air bubbles you can just pop them. And then I'm going to pipe all the rest. And then what we're going to do is let these sit at room temperature until the tops are no longer like right now, they're really sticky. You want them dry. Now, I typically I like to make macarons when the um, humidity is between like under 50%. I actually have a gauge handy thing to do. So if you have it like, uh, like between 45 and 50% uh, percent humidity, I find that you need to let these sit about a half an hour. Humidity is higher, you may have to let these sit an hour, even longer. So that's what you need to do. I'm going to finish piping all of these and then when you're ready to bake, you want to preheat your oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 165 degrees Celsius. So that's what I'm going to do, finish off, let these sit, and then when we come back, we will bake them off. So now we are ready to bake off our macarons. You bake them off in order of the first ones you pipe, the first ones you go into the oven. And this is my first sheet. If I touch it, it's no longer tacky. That's what I'm looking for. That took, like, I'm at about 45% humidity right now. Took about a half an hour. So 
you know, and really, if they sit longer than that, that's perfectly fine. Like, I'm going to bake these off. These are going to sit even longer, you know, so don't worry about it. Now, macarons, like I said, they're a little temperamental. Everyone's oven is a little different. I find the 325 Fahrenheit, 165 Celsius is my optimum temperature for my oven. If you find them maybe uh, browning too much, then the next second batch, you could lower your temperature maybe by 25 Fahrenheit and 15 C. You know, just experiment. Just keep that in mind if they, you find them browning like too much. So oven, oven time, 12, I'm going to say 12 to 15 minutes. Again, it can vary depending on your oven. I do rotate my baking sheet front to back about halfway through baking. So what are we looking for? Well, the optimum is what we're looking for, which is always a nerve-wracking time when they're baking. We want them to rise. Flat tops, straight sides, and then this is what we're all looking for, is that ruffle on the bottom of our macaron which is called a foot. Uh, that is what we're looking for. We don't want any cracking. You know, typically a lot of times with the cracking, it is about humidity. Um, I do recommend if you live in a really humid climate, you know, if you have air, crank that air down. That's what I do. So I get that 45 to 50%. Otherwise, you know, you could have made, your macarons could have to sit for a couple hours before you bake. That's I'm just going to warn you. So, I'm for me about 13 minutes. Like I said, 12 to 15. Rotate it, and good luck. <laughs> okay, so our cookies are done. So put your baking sh sheet on a wire rack. And we're looking good. We have the flat tops. We have that little ruffle around the bottom. So what I'm going to do is let these sit. I like to let them cool completely, you know, in the pan on a wire rack. And then, meanwhile, I'm going to bake off the rest of my cookies. And then when we come back, I will show you how to uh, remove the uh, almond cookies from the parchment paper. So now I'm going to show you how to remove the cookies from the parchment paper. First, like I said, let them cool completely like this. And then lift your parchment paper up. And then take a flat edge. I'm using an offset spatula, but you could just like use a knife. And then I just take it and then just run it straight down like that. And they separate or they should, if you bake them long enough, they'll separate from the uh, parchment like that. So that's how we do it. So I'm going to finish all that up. And then when we come back, we will make our strawberry cheesecake filling. Yum. <laughs> so now for our strawberry cheesecake filling. You will need a quarter of a cup, five grams of freeze-dried strawberries, as we, we used a little in our uh, meringue cookies, now we're going to use a, a lot more. So I'm going to put them, because we need to grind them to a fine powder, I'm going to put them in my food processor, along with a half a cup, 60 grams of confectioner sugar. You may know that as powdered or icing sugar. And I'm just going to process this until all our... Uh, Strawberries are a nice fine powder. Okay, that's good. <laughs> a little smoke, the powdered sugar smoke. So this is what it looks like. It turns our uh, powdered sugar a pretty pink color. And now, I'm just going to do this with my hand mixer. You could just use with a wooden spoon, or if you want to use your stand mixer, use your paddle attachment. The first thing you will need is three tablespoons, 42 grams of, I'm using unsalted butter. You could use salted, whichever you like. Have it at room temperature. And I'm just going to beat it with my hand mixer just until it gets nice and smooth. Okay, 
cord out of the way. And next, I'm just adding, I like to add a little bit of vanilla. So a quarter, just a quarter of a teaspoon, one gram of pure vanilla extract. And I'm going to add all of our sugar. Now, could you add more or less? Yes, you could. Um, really to taste. This is kind of the amount I like. But the only thing is, the, you know, it takes a while for the real, this intense strawberry flavor to come out once you make the filling. I find at least, say, 12 hours to 24. So if you make it and you taste it and go, well, it's not the, it's not enough strawberry flavor, give it some time. Because, <laughs> you know, I even notice if I leave it 12 hours, you know, once I put my macarons together, the flavor really comes out. It's just wonderful. So now I'm going to just beat these together. Be careful when you start. I don't want that sugar coming up in my face. Okay. I can already smell <laughs> the strawberry flavor. Okay, so now we're making a cheesecake filling. So I am adding three ounces, which is 85 grams of the full fat, like regular cream cheese. And you want it like really quite soft. So leave it out for like at least an hour or so. So I'm gonna add part of it. I'm gonna beat that in until it's really nice and smooth and then I'll add the second part. good. As you can see, we're not needing, we're not going to need to uh, add any like food coloring. Those, uh, the strawberries, as you can see, it is a beautiful pink color. So wonderful. <laughs> okay, that looks good. I did beat it a little bit. I wanted some air in that filling. So, there we have it. Oh. So now, I'm going to pipe my filling onto my uh, cookies. So I've just got like a small plain tip. This is a Wilton number 12. And just a piping bag. If you don't have a plain tip, really, you could just take like a small uh, freezer bag and just snip off the ends. And just fold that down. You could put it into a cup if you find that easier than holding. Either way, we don't have to worry about this. Like when we did our meringue cookies, we had to make sure it didn't come out the other end. But this is thick, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay. That. My dirty dishes. So fold that up and then get my flat edge just to get that all down to the end. Kind of open up your bag a bit, get rid of the air. Okay, I'm just going to put that in there. Well, we talk about our meringue cookies. Now, if you were a perfect piper with your piping bag, every one of your uh, cookies would be the same size. I can't, oh, I really can't say that mine are all, some are big, some are small. So what we want to do is match them up. So you want to have, you know, the same size cookie. You don't want a big one and a small one. Won't look very good. So just match all yours up. I don't have all of mine here. I find with this recipe, you're going to get, you know, depending on your piping, about, say, 30 to be on the safe side, 30 of the sandwich cookies. So I line them up like this, and then I just turn over one side, and that's the side I'm going to pipe the filling on. So just, that way you can just have it on the assembly line. 
I'll just do this one. I'll just show you one. So just, I just pipe, you know, as, as always, as much or as little as you want. Like so. And then just take your top cookie and sandwich it together. Press gently down. And there we have our strawberry cheesecake macaron. Pretty cool. Now, the day you make these, the, your um, cookies like are quite crisp on the outside and, and then they're soft and chewy on the inside. Now some people will say, oh, well, you're supposed to eat your macarons the first day. Actually, I don't think so because I actually like to make them and then put them in the refrigerator, usually overnight, because there's a couple reasons. One, that the filling and then the cookie, the filling softens the cookie, so it all becomes one, and, all, and it takes time for all those flavors to kind of mingle together, and the, and the cookie to soften. And also, like I said, that uh, the free, whenever you use freeze-dried fruit like the strawberries the flavor doesn't come out right away it takes a while for the you know the like it's in the with the butter and the cream cheese that's a soften and then it brings out that strawberry flavor so it really benefits from sitting overnight i find like and so this is one i mean actually i made these you can store macarons you know it depends on your filling with this filling i find i can store these four to five days in the refrigerator or you know, this makes quite a few. So you can freeze them for about a month. And then what I do is I uh, do thaw them out in the refrigerator. It just takes a few hours. So this is, uh, this is like three, four days I've had these. So I'll try this. Oh. So the cookie is softened and they do I mean, it tastes like strawberry cheesecake to me. Really good strawberry flavor. Like I said, if you make them and you go, oh, I like a little stronger flavor, then you could add more than like five grams of freeze dried. Up that if you want. But these are just so. <laughs> you know, they are quite expensive in the pastry shop. And if you make them, not only you save yourself a lot of money, but it's such a fun thing to make. It makes you feel like you really accomplished something. So try these. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.